Puerto Rico is a common tax haven for U.S. citizens who move down there for the beautiful beaches, the amazing weather, and of course, the very large tax breaks. Let me put on my Puerto Rico golf hat here. I'm going to explain to you exactly what it was like to live in Puerto Rico, why I ultimately decided to leave. And this is coming from someone who lived there for over three years. So I can give you a lot of good insight into the pros and the cons of going to Puerto Rico as a tax haven. Yo, look at this. <laughs> now, Puerto Rico has a couple different tax programs. Act 20 and Act 22 are the most popular. These are now rolled up into what's called Act 60 common misconception, you can still separate these out. I was taking advantage of Act 20. That was the program I was enrolled into and approved by the Puerto Rican government, which allows my business to get a 4% corporate tax rate. That's right, paying 4% in total, no matter how much money we make on all the net profits of the business. Now, the other option, which a lot of people take, is what's called Act 22. This is where you get 0% capital gains. You'll see your stock traders and crypto guys talking about this program, right? That's where you don't pay anything. Now, there's different restrictions with both of these. Like the one I was in, I couldn't have U.S. office space or any U.S. employees. So those are restrictions that you have to modify around. In Act 22, you have to buy a home within two years. So there's some different things like this but those are the two big programs that you can opt to join. Now, one thing I've always heard is people saying, oh, I'm gonna move to Puerto Rico and suddenly sell all my crypto or sell my business that I've been building for seven years. It wasn't built there. The gains weren't acquired there. You can't do that. You gotta play by the rules. Now, before I go into what it was like to live there, why I left, I wanna first explain what it's like to get set up down there. The cost, the things that go into it, everything about it. Make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe. So I hope you got your pens ready because you're gonna be doing a lot of paperwork. Moving down to Puerto Rico, you're gonna want a company to help you with this process. I used P Relocate and had a great experience. To my knowledge, they're the most popular, largest one that helps people relocate, right? P Relocate down to PR, Puerto Rico. And they really helped with the process. They can recommend different vendors, real estate agents, CPAs, and whatnot once you're down there. But they help do all the paperwork. Now, you're going to have to sign a lot of forms. A lot of these are going to have to be notarized. I was using online notaries for most of this stuff. You also have to like go request criminal background checks from the state you're coming from. And a lot of random things like that that's a bit bureaucratic and is definitely annoying to get. But you only have to do it one time. Now, as you submit the paperwork and get the process going, Puerto Rico has to actually accept you and or your business into the island. This is called your decrees, like your Act 20 decree, your Act 22 decree has to get accepted. And this can very commonly take 6, 12, even 18 months I've seen for some of my friends to get accepted. Now, you can move down before that. You can start taking tax-exempted earnings. You can start clocking your time down there before. So obviously talk to whoever's helping you get set up, but you can clock time before. I would highly recommend during this process to actually go spend some time on the island, just like you would never want to move anywhere without spending time there. Well, make it a big decision to move somewhere so far away that's probably so different, you're going to want to check it out. I went down for 10 days. I stayed right in San Juan in Condado, which is where I ended up living for the first year while I was there, and at least gave me a feel of what the city was like and what I could expect. The total cost for me to get set up down in Puerto Rico was about $5,500, maybe $6,000. I think that's a pretty average number that most people pay. Could be a little more, a little less. And it took about four months from start to finish. Going down to see the island, doing the paperwork, getting everything filed, getting everything they need, signing the documents, actually finding an apartment down there, signing the lease, and then traveling down. So you could definitely do it a lot quicker. People do. But uh, I took my time with it, a couple months, which really isn't that bad. And now comes the fun part. What is it actually like to live in Puerto Rico? Okay, first and foremost, you have to spend at least 183 days a year on the island. This is called the physical presence test. I highly recommend you read the tax code if you're considering going down there. It'll give you a lot of clarity. There is a way to spend five months a year in Puerto Rico instead of six. And that is if you are spending a significant amount of time traveling outside of the country. You can exempt up to 30 days a year, which will be credited towards time in Puerto Rico if you are traveling outside the country. The basic premise here is you don't want to spend more time in any one place than you do Puerto Rico especially in the States. You don't qualify for the tax benefits there just because you spent time. You have to also pass what's called a closer connections test. So there's things you can do down there like register to vote. You could get a local phone number. Again, not necessary, but doing all these things helps. You could join a local soccer club if you play soccer or whatever. Like whatever you do, you got to kind of build a life there and be able to show it if you ever had to. So having closer connections, like if you have a wife and child back in New York and you travel back and forth frequently and yeah, you spend 183 days there, but you're closer connections test probably won't pass. If you have a big ass house back in the States and a bunch of cars and a tiny one bedroom condo in Puerto Rico, 
Again, it's not looking like a primary residence. I always tried to get my time done by like September so that I'd have a buffer. So I could spend more time there if I wanted to, or I could go travel. I just didn't want to be in a situation where something popped up and for whatever reason, I couldn't get my time done on the island. And eventually you'll see the theme here that started to feel a little bit restrictive is like having to be somewhere. Another thing to note is with your home in Puerto Rico, you have to actually keep it year round. You can't Airbnb for the six months you're there. You can't rent out your home, whether you own it or rent it. You can't just rent it out sublease it for the other time you're not there. Depending on where you choose to live, the prices can vary, but a decent apartment that comes furnished is usually going to start around 3,500, no matter where you are. My first apartment was in Condado in one of the nicest, newest buildings right in the city center, close to everything I could walk. I hadn't bought a car yet. Um, and that was $11,500 a month. It was a really big place, beautiful ocean views, like 3,000 square feet, but it was definitely expensive. And when I moved out, they raised the rent to $15,000 a month. So again, it's pretty comparable to like a, a premium place. Now, if you're going to move down to the island and you are a fan of playing golf, you're in luck. It's some of the best golf I've ever played in my life. I'd frequently play on the Trent Jones course over in the St. Regis Resort. That's in Rio Grande, Bahia Beach. Gorgeous, gorgeous course. And it's always empty, so you can fly through 18 holes real quick. Awesome awesome experience. I think there's about 16 golf courses throughout the island. I played quite a few, not all of them. Uh, Flamboyant down in Palmas del Mar is great over in Dorado. There's some great courses there, but definitely something you should check out if you play golf or want to. Now, if you've done research on Puerto Rico, the tax program, and listen to anybody else talk about it, you've probably heard of Dorado Beach. It's nice, and it's nice to do it in Dorado, AKA fucking heaven on earth. This is where pretty much all the wealthy people live. Obviously there's other people spread out and there's different communities, but this is the big one, the Ritz Carlton Resort in Dorado. Um, and Dorado is actually quite big. So there's Dorado and then there's Dorado Beach behind the gates. There's different pockets of it. Now living in Dorado is really where all the higher end people are. There's where there's a lot of money back there. Homes go up to 40, $45 million. It's quite expensive. It's a beautiful place. I have a lot of friends who live there. I considered it, honestly, if I was gonna keep living in Puerto Rico, that's probably where I would live. But here's some information on that. Just to get into the resort as an initiation fee, it's 150,000 now. They raised it. You also pay $1,000 every month for the rest of your life, if you want to be a member, they get you access to everything, the clubhouses, their pools, the fitness centers, pickleball courts. They got helipads over there. So some people will fly their helicopter to their private jet to leave. Like a lot of stuff like that. It's a, it's a pretty cool setup. You get cheap access to the golf courses and stuff. But a cheap apartment over there, and I say cheap, is going to start at about 12000 a month. You could probably get away with that over in Plantation, maybe in the fairways. Um, but prices have come down a lot. They were minimum 20000 uh, during 2020. So they've come down a little bit. A lot of people do opt to live right outside the gates. They live in Paseos, Villa de Golf, they live Vega Alta, you know, anywhere, Sabanera, just right outside uh, where they pay a lot less, but then you have to drive in. So just keep that in mind. You can't get around in the golf cart, which is quite a cool community. If you're looking for community, which is really important when you move somewhere, Dorado is a great spot to network. So I do see why a lot of people go there. Now, just like any place that has been beat up, that's in debt, that's not super developed, the government does not function super well. There's a lot of things that are frustrating. Honestly, the best experience I had was getting my driver's license. That was quite easy. There's a lot of third-party places you can go to do that. I went to the one right in Condado above the Supermax. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's very easy. Very you know diplomatic process. I liked it. Everything else, terrible. Phone service is definitely something I will mention for some reason, never works as good on Sundays. And it's just really spotty throughout the island. No matter what carrier you have, it just gets a little bit annoying. Now I will talk about safety real quick because it's a point to consider. You can get a license to carry concealed carry only in Puerto Rico. I would recommend it, especially if you are not living behind the gates. It's something to do. You might as well do it right when you get there. Um, I've seen a couple of bad things happen. I have seen and heard multiple gunfires. I've woken up to gunfire while living in the city. Um, I haven't personally had any like close calls but I've seen multiple bodies with, you know, police had just arrived. I saw a motorcyclist get hit and then run over by a couple of different cars. And for multiple minutes, hundreds of cars on the highway going from the airport, East La Verde into Santorce. Everybody's just like swerving around this body. Nobody stops. It's just weird. Like nobody seems to care. I had a, another friend just behind Gallery Plaza. He lived right there. Uh, he got held up at gunpoint with his friend at night. So there I am standing in my nice little neighborhood with a friend of mine. He has a shotgun pointed to his chest. I have a machine gun pressed on my neck. And 60 seconds later, after after they escaped, those people, those two robbers shot multiple times two other people. You can find the police report on that. It was a big deal because the people they shot were FBI and DEA agents down there on vacation. The same gun that was on my neck 60 seconds earlier, shot this woman five times. You know, there's stuff like this that happens for sure. I had a friend who was doing salsa dancing lessons in Santorce. Okay, maybe he wasn't in the best area, you know, some sketchy parts there, but 
automatic gunfire opens up and it's hitting the cement all around them. There's like a little half barrier wall. They all lay down. The teacher, everybody's like, get down. So they lay on the floor for 10 minutes while this gunfire is happening. And then as soon as it's done, everybody stands up and turns on the music and starts dancing like nothing happened. Like my friend who just moved there is shaking with his girlfriend there, understandably. So it's like, it's just like death and gunfire and gang activity is like very normalized there. And like, that's a little bit weird to me, but you will not have that problem if you live behind the gates in one of the large communities. Now, when you're picking a place to live, keep in mind, you're going to want a backup generator or live in an apartment building that has one because the power does go out. The power grid, this is crazy, is controlled by a privately owned company. Luma. Nobody likes Luma on the island. There's a lot of corruption happening. Now, on the contrary, there are some amazing beaches. You've probably seen it. You've heard about it. You should definitely explore the island. I was able to get out quite a bit. I did the bioluminescent bay in Fajardo, kayaking around at midnight. That was really cool. I've gotten to see a lot of beautiful beaches. Now, depending on where you go, please be careful. I say this because it's my honest opinion. On more than one occasion, I watched in Condado and in the back bay somehow, a diver squad pulling out a body bag with someone in it who had drowned. Like it is very choppy, very aggressive. If you don't know how to not just swim, but read the oceans, there's some crazy stuff that happens. I watched two tourists from Atlanta that I had a brief conversation with as I was warning them. I'm in the water in Condado, right in front of uh, La Concha, just right there. And I tell them, don't, don't swim out past where you can touch. And they're like, oh no, we swim all the time. We're fine. I'm like, okay. They go out, they get ripped out. They get ripped down the current and slammed into all these rocks and had to get rescued. I told you so, you know, it's like, just be really careful where you are. The ocean is really, really strong. Some spots are peaceful and super calm. Like Arecibo is my favorite, favorite beaches over there. Amazing. And the last thing I want to mention before I tell you why I left the island is healthcare. This is obviously a really important aspect of daily life, right? If you're bringing a family down there, married kids, all this is super important to consider. There are a few very nice private facilities. There's one over in Dorado outside of the gates that anybody can access, really good healthcare there. But a big thing to consider with Puerto Rico is the negative migration, meaning more people leave the island every year than come there. A lot of people leave, but who is leaving? It's not the average person. It's the skilled doctor, the person who went through school, the dentist, the healthcare professionals, the lawyers, the business owners, the people with means who are going to greener pastures for a reason. So because of that, you are left with, and not to sound aggressive, just less amounts of talented people. And in my opinion, the healthcare industry has suffered a lot because of this. I'll tell you a quick story. I, this was my second year living there. I had an issue late at night. It's 11 p.m. My ribs, uh, I, I, I dislocated like three ribs and the muscle had actually separated off of them. This is by far one of the most painful things I've ever been through in my life and I've had a lot of injuries. I could not breathe past like 20% lung capacity because it was stretching me too much. I couldn't get up, get down, flex, move. I, I could not do anything. I'm by myself in my apartment. It's 11 at night. And I called the ER and they hung up on me twice because I didn't speak Spanish. Okay, like that's not okay. I was calling the big ER right in the city and they didn't even try to get anybody who speaks English. It was a big problem. So I waited, I laid, I could not move. I waited for like two days until I could finally get up, move. I booked a flight on my phone and I mustered my way over to the airport and I went to Miami for treatment, right? So it's like, Maybe I could have tried calling every single hospital, but like this is just the, the service you're going to get there. Now, for general health care, I will recommend Proven. It's a private health clinic. It's basically a concierge service uh, based out of Santorsa, I believe. But they will have people come to your house. So you can get your blood drawn at your house. They'll set up dentist appointments for you and just organize your health care. So I would recommend that. I think it's $1,000 a year. Just one thing I want to mention because healthcare is really important and I had some really negative experiences there. Now to the juicy stuff, please leave a like down below and subscribe here, you guys. I want to explain why I left. This is a really important video for me to make. In fact, I wanted to make it right as I left Puerto Rico. Instead, I waited six months. I told myself I would give myself six months to kind of cool off to some degree and just like, let it sit for a bit, okay? Otherwise, the video would have been a lot more aggressive, all right? I've got a list here that I really want to make sure I hit through. So, I was traveling back and forth for all sorts of stuff. Puerto Rico is not just south of Florida. It's far. It's very far. And the question is far from what, right? I do go back to the U.S. a lot. I go to Asia and Europe a lot. So pretty much anywhere I went, it was two flights, which was really inconvenient. It was a full day of travel just to get back to anywhere I would really go to in the U.S. It's the full day lost. Uh, in, I think it was 2022, I took 115-ish flights. That was about 70 trips because a lot of those were double flights to get somewhere. Really frustrating really expensive, taxing on your body. It's just like my business didn't progress as much because of that. So there was a lot of stuff to consider there. I also own a lot of real estate in the US and I qualified as a real estate professional, which means I can take the depreciation from my properties and offset that against any income I have, which means 
while the tax benefits in Puerto Rico were helping me greatly, for sure, um, I can at least take a piece and, and save some of that in taxes because of my real estate. So I do at least have that going for me uh, now that I'm back in the U.S. and beforehand. So I was able to offset a little bit. So it, it wasn't like I was maxing out every benefit I possibly could because I'm in real estate. So cars. Cars are a huge part of my life. I mean, it's it's something like right now I got four or five cars, got a GT3 RS, an RA, much like I, I love cars. And it's something where number one, I didn't feel safe having those in Puerto Rico. I have friends in Dorado, only one who actually has like a cool car. And like you can drive it in some spots, the roads are really, really bad. But safety to me was like a big element of that. Like leaving it out somewhere, is someone gonna mess with it, steal it, break into it, key it, I don't know. Where do you get it fixed out there? So it's just something to consider for sure if you like cars. So lifestyle for me started becoming an issue. Day-to-day -day life was boring. Like there's nothing better for me than working for four or five hours and then going to the gym, but I get to have an experience going to the gym because I'm enjoying my car on the way there. Like I'm a true car enthusiast. So it just felt a little bit stale in my life. Uh, it was something there, you know, so I bought a Ford Explorer out there. It wasn't as exciting. Uh, increased cost of living. This is another thing. Well, obviously it's offset by taxes. I mean, I was saving a lot of money on taxes. I'm still a frugal guy, but I was in Puerto Rico for about half of my three years there. I was maintaining a second home. At some points I had cars, other points I didn't. Um, so it's just added expenses. Puerto Rico is not particularly cheap. Also the increased travel cost, hotels, Airbnbs, a lot of flights, you know, food in the airports, water bottles, it's like it all adds up. So definitely spending more there, of course, still way offset by taxes, but uh, you know, something to consider. And now one of the biggest things, there's a lot of other little stuff. I'm not going to harp on every little thing in this video because people think I'm being petty. But one of the big things for me is the environment no longer pushed me. And what I realized was like when I was living in California, I was excited and being able to travel. And then in Arizona, it's like I'm around people. I'm seeing stuff. I'm just in an environment that pushes me. Whereas laid back island life where it's kind of slow, everybody's chilling, maybe you're making money, whatnot. But it's like, it's very relaxed. And I, I realized after like a, the first year, I was, I was just kind of chilling. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I'm a hard charging, like I, I have to be having progress. I'm a very logical individual who just goes. Puerto Rico is a laid back party scene, loud, everything's like that. Like I don't drink, I don't go out, I don't wanna go out. I don't like being in a loud place. Like I just, that's not me. That's not the people I hang around. So it just, again, like kind of the lifestyle wasn't a good fit there and it eventually started just wearing down on my business and everything that I was like thinking and progressing and learning, it just, it affects everything. Your environment is so, so crucial. And I will add one piece to this. It did start to bother me that I couldn't just get in my car and change my environment, right? Like if I'm living in California or Arizona, I can drive into the mountains. And yes, there's some mountains in Puerto Rico, but it's, it's different. I can drive to the desert. I can go to the snow. I can go to the beach. Like you have diversification there. Um, and in Puerto Rico, you don't. It's just an island. And I understood that going in, but it did start to like just bother me. And all this is not to say Puerto Rico is bad. I had a great time living there. A couple more things to mention. 50-50 shot of your Amazon package showing up. SJU, the big airport there, San Juan, is awesome. Okay, really well-run airport. I have to give them props on it. They also added clear at the end of 2022. Makes it very easy to travel, both domestically and internationally. They have direct flights to Madrid. You can jump over to Europe in about eight hours. Very easy to navigate. I will give them a big thumbs up on the airport. Another thing I'll mention is the racism and uh, discrimination that I faced there, which I know might sound weird saying, uh, but anytime I posted anything online about Puerto Rico, about living in, especially about the tax benefits, um, I mean, I'd get serious death threats. Not all, oh, like, screw you, like, like people like DMing me weekly, like, hey, I'm, I'm finding you. I'm looking for you on the island. I'm gonna shoot you if I see you, like crazy stuff. I also just saw some stuff I didn't really resonate with, with daily life out there. Not once, not twice, but at least minimum 100 times. I watched people throw huge amounts of trash out the window of a moving vehicle. A guy at a red light throws his big slushy cup. I mean, it's like one of those half gallon. He's a big fat guy. Just drops it, like throws it out the window. And one time I did this, I picked it up and I threw it back at him. I mean, it sprayed all over the inside of his car. And I just kept walking. And he's like, yelling rah, 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 some shit in Spanish. I don't know what he said. But like, you see stuff like that. It's just not cool. I do not want to be in a place where people are doing that constantly. It's okay. It's common practice. A lot of it's dirty. I know a lot of Puerto Ricans that are amazing. I have a ton of friends down there doing awesome stuff that are from there, that live there. I also know a lot of people from there who left. So it just kind of depends on your lifestyle. Just like a lot of people leave their hometown. I left my hometown. It wasn't for me. Uh, there's nothing good or bad about it. But I will say this. I definitely don't regret moving to Puerto Rico but I also don't regret leaving. It was an incredible experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I really enjoyed my time there. My health really went up to another level. Kind of being in isolation there and focusing on my health uh, was big. I learned a lot of stuff, got super healthy, and I'm very grateful for that. So just remember, where you live matters, okay? And if you are a U.S. citizen, Puerto Rico is not the only option. If you're looking to lower your taxes, you can think more globally. There's different global structures you can set up. But also, 
Understand that where you live matters from a personal perspective too. Your motivation level, your happiness, your health, all of that is a factor, maybe not the only one, but it definitely is a factor. What I realized is I just didn't feel as good when I was in Puerto Rico as elsewhere. So that is ultimately why I decided to leave. Look, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Follow me over on Instagram. I don't post too much here on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna be starting to do some more videos, but follow me on Instagram. I post a ton of stuff there every single day. You can shoot me a message, whatever. I hope this video provided some insight. Um, I really enjoyed my time there in Puerto Rico, and this was an honest review on everything to do with it and why I left.